Okay, many Canadians watching the U.S. election as the campaign hits its final stretch. Some are so invested in the outcome that they're going south to help. Campaigning is nothing new to my next guests, Warren and Lisa Kinsella. They've been fixtures on the Canadian political scene for years. Warren worked on Liberal Party campaigns and was at one time an aide to Jean Chrétien. Lisa has worked in government relations. Both went to the U.S. to help campaign for Hillary Clinton. Warren and Lisa Kinsella joining me in studio. So, guys, uh, why go to a campaign and take part in a campaign uh, that you can't vote in an election? Well, aside from the fact that we, we love campaigning, you know, we do it in Canada and we decided that we wanted to get involved in this one specifically because of how important it is. And it wasn't just that uh, I don't want Donald Trump to be president, I really want Hillary Clinton to win because I think she's the best candidate for the job and she's the most experienced person, man or woman, to ever to have run for office. And I wanted to make sure that we had a little bit of, of a part in that. How did this idea come about? Well, all the good ideas are usually hers, but uh, we had, um, back in my Chrétien days, I had known some of the Democratic guys, Carville and Stephanopoulos and so on. So there's always you know, been a connection between Canadian Liberals and U.S. Mm -hmm. Democrats. But this time, because as Lisa says, the stakes really are quite high in all seriousness. And um, we just said, we got to do something. So we worked for Hillary as volunteers. Uh, in Maine, New Hampshire, and here at our headquarters in Brooklyn. Uh, how long were you down there? This doesn't sound like you flew in for the weekend. Well, yeah, we were over in, a period of days, over a period of months. We were in Maine and New Hampshire for about two weeks, and then we decided to hit New York in uh, October. So we were very fortunate to be able to have done that, and we were very happy to have been and asked to help. And it was totally help. cool seeing behind <laughs> the scenes in Brooklyn, yeah. because it made a lot of the Canadian campaigns I've been involved with look quite behind the times, I yeah, guess. Yeah, it is quite the operation in the Brooklyn headquarters. Well, let's, let's, how, let's talk about how it compares to the Canadian campaigns. What are well, the differences? Well, the first thing is when you come in, the degree of security that they have in Hillary's campaign was unlike anything we'd ever experienced. Mm -hmm. Three levels of security, tons of focus on computer security, obviously because of what has happened with yeah. you know, the Russian hacking. And of course we had to sign a, a non-disclosure agreement uh, to make sure that we weren't going to be revealing any, any secrets that we learned in, inside uh, that office building. But they're just, they're a group of pros who are highly dedicated to... Organized. They're organized, they're dedicated to Hillary Clinton, and it was just an amazing group of people to have spent some time with. Okay, how were you received, Canadians coming down? A uh, bit of an oddity. <laughs> Lisa was, they ended up asking Lisa to give a speech to all the volunteers, some of which come from other, other countries, and, um, you know, what are you guys doing here? And, of course, there were the inevitable jokes about everybody, if Trump wins, can come up and live in our basement. Yes, they were and, very happy uh, to come to a country that uh, Justin Trudeau is prime minister of. Yeah, they're big fans of Trudeau. Yeah. So, uh, but it was, um, you know, that question you asked is a fair question. Why are you guys here? And, and our answer was always the same. Well, this, you know, it's our planet too, and the stakes are pretty high, you know, even if you can't vote. Now, is it possible to characterize the mood of the campaign? I mean, we've seen the ups and downs of the polls. It must have varied over the, 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 the various times you went and checked in. Well, I think, you know, overall, they were always very um, confident in their candidate. They knew they had the best candidate. They knew they had a really great team. You know, now it's coming down to get out the vote. And Donald Trump has proven that they don't have the, the campaign infrastructure for that. So they're very comfortable going in these last few days, but of course you never not take cocky. your not cocky and you never take the foot off the gas pedal until the last vote is in. So I think everyone is uh, probably tired from working on such a long campaign. Of course, they're very different than the Canadian elections, uh, but they're excited. They're all exhausted, but they're very excited. What, what we saw, what we were struck by, was the degree of organization for tomorrow, for E Day. And, you know, this, the polls have shown things tightening up in the past few days and Trump getting closer to Hillary. There's no question, that is true. That has happened. Um, but what the polls don't measure is the strength that they have on the ground. And mm -hmm. Hillary's campaign organization mm -hmm. is the most formidable campaign organization either of us have ever seen in our lifetimes. It was extraordinary how this is where she's going to beat Trump 
if she does in fact beat Trump, and I think she will, it's with the organization. That's right. So let's make a prediction here. How many electoral college votes do you think she'll get in the end? North of 300. Wow. I'm a little bit more conservative than Warren. I would like to, I would like to see it north of 300, but I think probably in the t high 290s. If she is elected, what kind of president do you think she'll be? Um, I think that uh, people will see that she is much more formidable on foreign affairs than they realize. For, unfortunately, because of Trump, you know, he was just this kind of gong show of a candidate. There wasn't much attention paid to issues, but her understanding of foreign affairs and a more dangerous world is formidable. I agree, and I think you know, she's made it very clear she wants to be a progressive president. Uh, she heard Bernie Sanders' people loud and clear. She's a woman who spent the last 30, 40 years championing causes that other people have, have not, you know, LGBT issues, poverty issues, women's issues, immigration issues, and I think we'll see that in her presidency. She really is a woman who cares and has compassion for people who haven't been able to to achieve uh, in the same way others have. And I think she'll, she'll be a compassionate yet strong and intelligent president. Well, we'll start that process one way or another in a little over 24 hours. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. You're very welcome.